Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. We have 17 to the power 20 and 63 to the power 13. And we're gonna to try to find out which number is larger. Now, how do you compare two numbers? You can use a calculator, right? False. You're not supposed to use a calculator because that would be cheating, sort of, right? You can't use a computer, no algebra system. The only thing you can use is your brain paper and pencil, okay? So let's go ahead and use some other numbers to compare these two. First of all, I want you to notice that 17 is much, much smaller than 63, but its exponent is kind of bigger than 13. So do you think a smaller base with a large exponent will be able to beat up a small exponent with a larger base? That's the million dollar question. That's what we're gonna try to answer here, okay? So let's see how we can compare these two numbers. One of the methods that we use for these kinds of questions is, you can go ahead and take these numbers and divide because if you're trying to compare two numbers that are positive, obviously both of these numbers are positive, right? You would agree? So if two numbers are positive like A and B and I'm trying to compare them, there's actually mainly two ways to do it. Either, either you can look at a minus b, and if a minus b is positive, that implies a is greater than b, or if a minus b is negative, that implies a is less than b. Or the second method is by quotient, by dividing. If you divide a by b, and you get an answer that is greater than 1, that means a is greater than b. Notice that a and b are both positive in this case. Or if a over b is less than 1, like a fraction, like 1 third, 2 thirds, whatever, that means a is less than b. This is only true for positive numbers, obviously, as you may guess. So we could probably use these methods, but the exponents are not the same. So how do you deal with that? So let's think about it. Subtraction is probably harder. I would use division because we could kind of uh, divide these numbers and come up with some approximation, can't we? How? We can actually try to do this. Why don't we? So our goal in this case, since we're using division, the second uh, method, we would try to get something greater than one or less than one. That's what we need to prove, okay? So we can try to get the either the same base or the same exponent. What do I mean by that? Uh, I can try to get something like this, but then I would have to multiply by something to turn this into uh, 63 over 13. And that number would be basically one over 63 over 17 to the power 13. You get the idea? When you multiply these two bases, you get 63. Exponent is the same. So either that, in, in which case, we're gonna get 17 to the power seven from here. And if I flip this and write it as 13, oops, I mean 17. 17 over 63 to the power 13. You can either use a negative exponent or just flip the base. Same thing, right? Great. So now uh, we have a really large number. And again, we're trying to compare this to one. So if this number is, if this number can be compared to 17 to the power seven or the reciprocal of that, then we can try to get closer to, uh, closer to one. That's the goal, right? So here's one thing I can do. 17 over 63 can be written as one minus 46 over 63, right? And then of course I need to raise it to the power 13. So it kind of goes like this. This to the power 13 is the same as this to the power 13. This is where the binomial theorem comes in. And what is your goal? So your goal is the following. If 17 to the 17 times 17 over 63 to the power 13 is let's just say less than one. In this case, 17 to the 17 must be less than 63 over 17 to the power 13. Make sense? Or uh, we could try to show that this number, just leave it on the left-hand side, is less than 17 to the power negative seven, which is one over 17 to the seven. Again, that would require a lot of work, but one thing you can do is use the binomial theorem here and expand it, you're not probably not gonna expand very many terms. There's 14 terms here, but I don't think you need to do all of them. 
After a while, you're going to realize, oh, okay, this is going to exceed a certain number. But again, this is not very straightforward. In some cases, it works really nicely. But in our case, I don't think there's a smooth approach. Maybe there is, and I'm missing it. And please let us know if you see uh, what is going on here. Okay, but binomial theorem definitely is used for these kinds of problems. But I'm going to be showing you, presenting you with a different approach, which is actually pretty straightforward uh, for these numbers, especially for something like this. And at the end, we're going to look at the numerical values and one number is going to be bigger, obviously, if you know that they're not equal, right? They're not equal, so one has to be bigger. And we can kind of divide the bigger by the smaller to kind of like I get a ratio. So think about it. How many times do you think one number will be bigger than the other? 2, 3, 4, 10, 12, 79? I don't know. Just make a guess and we'll check that at the end, okay? Cool. Let me show you my method. And my approach is basically based upon using the same base as a transition. What do I mean by that? I want to compare these two bases that we can easily manipulate. In other words, powers of a prime. What are they? Think about two. Two to the first is two. Two to the second is four. Two to the third is eight. And then we get 16. And then we get 32, 64, 128, so on and so forth. And then look at powers of three. You know, you get, they grow obviously a little faster, getting us to the thousand real quick. And now, look at your bases. Do you think you can find a number that is close to 17? And the answer is yes, 16 is pretty close. Nice, that's a good sign. Can you find something close to 63? And again, yes, using the same prime base, we could use 64. That's the trick, you get the idea? That's the main idea, but let's go ahead and put it into practice and see how we can solve a problem like this, okay? Ready? And again, you could always use the binomial theorem uh, for these kinds of problems. I'm just thinking about writing this as 16 plus 1 to the power 20. And of course, then you can compare it to 16 to the power 20 or 2 to the power something. But we're going to use that idea in a different way. So here's what it is. 17 is greater than 16. Would you agree? Hopefully. So if you raise both sides to the power 20, this inequality will be maintained because the bases are greater than one. That's important. Of course, they're positive, right? So this will work. Great, what about that? Now, 16 is two to the fourth power, as you know, you can see here. So we can write the 16 to the power 20 as two to the four to the power 20, which would give us two to the power 80. So I can kind of set this equal to two to the power 80. Nice, let's leave it at that and now deal with the 63. What did we say about 63? It's close to 64. Is it less than 64 or greater than 64? Come on, you know that, right? 63 is less than 64. So I need to raise both sides to the power 13, and guess what? The inequality will be maintained, as before, because 63 and 64 are both greater than one. Nice. Now, we're gonna go ahead and write the 64 to the power 13 as 2 to the 6 to the power 13, and that would be 2 to the power 78 because 6 times 13 is 78. Make sense? Awesome. So we're going to set it equal to 2 to the power 78. So I got two inequalities or chain of inequalities. What am I going to do with them? Here's the trick. Take a look at this and this. What do you see? Hopefully you see what I see. I do see 2 to the power 80 and 2 to the power 78. They're pretty close, aren't they? I mean, one of them is four times bigger. So we can use that as a reference or maybe a transition, okay? So here's how it goes. 17 to the power 20 is greater than 16 to the power 20. We just talked about it, which is equal to 2 to the power 80. And 2 to the 80 is greater than 2 to the power 78 because they have the same base, but different exponents. So the bigger exponent will beat and then 2 to the power 78, as you can see here, if you take good notes, 64 to the power 13, which is greater than 63 to the power 13, because 64 is greater than 63. You see how we put it all together? But first, we kind of had to do the work. That was kind of like a prep. Once you have that, the rest is actually fairly easy. So this is my conclusion. And what does that mean? That means that 
this number is bigger. Yay, we have a winner. So 17, again, the smaller base wins in this case. And in most cases, that's the case, okay? Most of the time, the smaller base with a large exponent will win because exponent means more than the base. Base is like what you multiply by exponent is how many times you have that base, right? So that makes a huge difference. But does it make a huge difference? Let's go ahead and check it out. So that brings us to the numerical values. Yay! 17 to the power 20, as you can see, is about, I would say, 40 divided by 2.5, which is 80 divided by 5, about 16 times bigger, roughly. This number is 16 times bigger. If it was 17 times bigger, that would be interesting, right? Because that's a power of 17. But anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.